Welcome back everyone to my channel, Mythography or Not, where we look at how certain movies portray mythological heroes and how accurate they really are in their portrayal. Today we'll be looking at the portrayal of Heracles in the Disney movie Hercules. In most cases, Greek mythographies are often filled with stories of violence, sex, cheating, lying, and so on and so forth. And such themes have been left out primarily because Hercules is designated to be a children's movie. But let's just take a closer look and see how far Disney strayed away from this true story behind Heracles. In the film, infant Heracles is portrayed with his seemingly loving and devoted parents, Zeus and Hera, at what seems to be a baby shower. In reality, a mortal woman by the name of Alcmene caught the eye of Zeus. While Alcmene's fiancé, Amphitryon, was a way to avenge her brother's and father's deaths, Zeus saw this as the perfect opportunity to disguise himself as Amphitryon and trick her into procreating with him. Soon after the real Amphitryon returned and did the same with Alcmene. As a result, Alcmene was to bear twins, a child from each father. Unlike in the film, Hera was quite jealous of Zeus's adulterous acts and was devious in her ways. Through her tricks and deceit, she had Eurystheus, cousin Heracles, be born first and become ruler of Greece. Zeus and Hera certainly were not mother nor father of the year. Now looking at Heracles as an infant. The film does seem to get one minor aspect of Heracles' story right. Two snakes are sent to kill him, but he ends up strangling them. However, the movie differs in that Heracles is kidnapped by two servants of Hades and is then recovered by Amphitryon and Alcmene herself. In this moment, the servants transform themselves into snakes and attempt to kill the baby, but he ends up tying them into a knot and throwing them afar. The real story speaks to Hera's lack of devotedness as mother of the year. In one version, she herself sends the snakes to kill infant Heracles because she is so jealous and spiteful of what Zeus has done. In this failed attempt, Heracles ends up strangling the snakes while his twin brother is sprawled in fear on the nearby nurse. It was at this moment Amphitryon identified who the real Heracles was. Another thing I'd like to point out is just the irony in the use of snakes. Traditionally, snakes are meant to represent fertility, rebirth, and healing since it sheds its old skin. However, in both the story and film, snakes are used to bring death to an infant, which, seem, which seems completely opposite of their usual symbolism. The Twelve Labors as Initiation into Olympus The film basically pokes fun and makes humor out of the twelve labors that Heracles has to perform. In the film, he's very obviously wearing a lion skin, one that he most likely collected from Labor 1, slaying of the Nemean lion. After this, the character Phil goes on to read out Heracles' schedule for the day, which are other labors, as if he's a popular celebrity needed in many places. A bronze. At one, you got a meeting with King Augeus. He's got a problem with his staples. I'd advise you not to wear your new sandals. Phil. I told you, don't move! The daughters of the Greek Revolution. At three, Phil. you got to get a girdle from some Amazons. Phil, what's the point? According to the actual story, Heracles has made a servant to King Eurystheus and is ordered to perform the infamous Twelve Labors. 1. Slay the Nemean Lion, 2. Slay the Nine-Headed Hydra, 3. Capture the Hind of Arcadia, so on and so forth. The film depicts Heracles as a pampered celebrity, where in reality, he was meant to be portrayed as a servant, having to endure the harsh labors of the tasks set before him. Next, Love at First Sight. It is known that Heracles marries Megara. Now, as far as the relationship between himself and his wife, the movie and story pre present two very different perspectives. In the film, Heracles saves Megara, or Meg for short, from the underworld and returns to Mount Olympus. Heracles ultimately decides to stay with his true love on Earth instead of leaving her for a life of immortality on Mount Olympus, thus implying a quote, happily ever after story. Stay on Earth with her. I finally know where I belong. 
As ironic as it is, Heracles' name holds the meaning of the glory of Hera, despite her devout hatred for him. The primary reason being that Heracles proves his strength and power and becomes so popular by overcoming the various challenges and torment imposed onto him by Hera that was actually meant to break him down. Now, although Hera's torment did not physically break Heracles down, some say that such torment caused him much mental duress and suffering, which eventually made him mad. And it was in a spurt of his madness that Heracles ended up killing his whole family and then burned his home down. This can be visualized through the excerpts of Mythographies of Heracles, lines 1089 to 1152. For instance, in one part of the dialogue between Amphitryon and Heracles, Amphitryon begins by saying, Look there, Heracles, look there and see the bodies of those children. What hideous sight this is! What sorrow is this? You have waged a war that was no war against your own sons. Then, with Heracles, what war are you talking about? Who killed these children? Amphitryon, you and your arrows, my son, along with whatever god it was who brought it all about. But what are you saying, father? What have I done? You are a messenger of evil news, father. I am saying, my son, that you have killed your sons in a fit of madness. Your questions are full of sad answers. And my wife? Have I also murdered her? Yes. All this, Heracles, is the work of your own hand. The deeper meaning of this interaction goes to show that the story of Heracles could in fact be considered somewhat of a tragedy. Despite his brute strength and popularity, he suffered much from his own guilt and from the regret of his actions. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.